into church regularly. They used to come and tell me what is happening in the church, how vibrant he is, how he can preach, and how he, he loved his parishioners and how he is outgoing. So one day I said, let me make a try and go and see this almighty Father Moses Drame. Eventually when I went, I fell, fell in love with him. He, used, he, he, he loved me so much. He was carrying me around to all his outstations, to all where he used to do his pastoral work. Eventually, he started helping me to be a good Christian. He was not encouraging me initially to be a priest, but a good Christian, because I believe you cannot be a priest without being a good Christian. From there now, when he helped me to be a good Christian, one day, that was the eve of um, the pilgrimage at Kunkujang, we were going, and while, whilst he was driving, I told him that, Father, I want to be a priest. And Father told me, James, you have to go and pray about it. Then you come back. Then I went and pray. Then I came back to him and he told me, well, you have to go and pray again. Then I did likewise for three times. The fourth time now he told me to go to the seminary. By then he made arrangement with the then uh, seminary director, Father Gabuseka, for me to go for come and see. And when I went for this common sea, I loved the place, although it was strange. Then I was there. Eventually, he recommended me to move to the um, senior seminary at Ser in Sierra Leone, where I started in Kenema for nine good months. That is nine, 200 kilometers away from the city. I spent nine months there, Then I was, uh, and I was recommended to move to the senior seminary in Freetown Regent. Okay, um, here is a young man who was not uh, in love with the church. Mm -hmm. Well, in the sense he we are not uh, going to the church yes. to attend mass and other prayer sections yes. in the church uh, premises. Yes. Now, when you had the uh, the desire or the call to join the priesthood, what was it like between you and uh, your, your 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 family, letting you go? And then you stay to work for mm. the betterment of the family. Yes, um, because my family at that time, you know, I came from a very Catholic family because <coughs> that time there was a law that was binding us in the house that um, you have to go to church, otherwise you will not eat. And that law was very, very, very terrible for me because that law will tell a lot on me because I was the one that was dodging from church. But then it was like since I fell in love with my boys outside, I was ready to take the risk. I used to forgo or oversee the law and go out, play football without going to church. And when I come, I will not eat lunch. But then I used to go to my boys and eat there. I prefer going there to eat than to go to church. But then it's like there was a great change in my life when I started going to church, because there was, there was something like the new James and the old James. Because when I started now looking at me, looking at the past and the present, I thought I missed a lot because my dark days or my dark time was really, really a big problem. Because the, it was in the new James that I encountered Jesus Christ that I had my new Damascus experience. In the sense, I fell in love with God and I knew my position in God and I knew who God is and I knew what it means to be a Christian and I knew what it means to worship God every day. So there was a change with the past life, although it has been buried now, but then the new life takes precedence over everything. Uh, what did you uh, what did you say to your father when you make up your mind to join the seminary? When well, when I told my father I'm going to the seminary, he first looked at me and laughed because when I was a small boy, I was very 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 intelligent. At the same time, stubborn. Then my father told me, well, your first priority was to be a lawyer, and this is strange telling me that you want to go to the seminary. 
and I told my dad, well, that is my feeling at the moment. Just give me, just let me go and make a try. Because men are doing it, why not me? So my father told me, well, you know me, I don't want you to be a priest. But looking at, because looking at the family, nobody is a priest. And I want to see your great, great grandchildren, my great, great grandchildren. Then I told my father, come on, but we are five in number. And four boys, one girl. They will have children and you will know them. And my father was pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling. I said, no, let me just go and make a try. And eventually my mother convinced my dad Then I went to the seminary. Yes. Okay, uh, let's look at the, the typical life of a seminarian each day. Yeah, the seminary horarium, that is the timetable, is very tight because we wake up 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning every day prepare for morning mass after morning we normally have morning prayers then after morning prayers morning mass from the mass now we come down to our dormitories have our morning functions then pre take breakfast from breakfast now we go to we go for lectures from 8 30 to 1 25 we we lectures we close lectures 125 go to the chapel for midday prayers from the chapel we come down to our dormitories prepare for lunch after lunch we have recreation or you go and compile your notes or chat with your friends write assignments study or if you want to go and sleep or rest from there now there are two options you go for games or manual labor. Games are normally Tuesdays and Thursdays. Manual labors. Manual labor is Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Then from there we have Vespers, Vespers, night prayers, night prayers, studies, and the day will end like that. And the same activities continue. Continues for the each day. The same activities continue. They 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 they, they unroll each day. They unroll for the whole year of the seminary. Any sporting activities in association with you? Yes, because I like going, I like playing football, but then last year when I went, I decided to lay football off, so I was just relaxing. That's why they said I have a big stomach now. I just relax for the whole year, listen to music, and that's all. But I like sports anyway, it's my game. Yeah. It's a very, very exciting game. Yes, 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 it is, it is. At what stage are you in the, uh, in the seminary? Uh, presently, I am in my third year theology. I'm left with three, uh, two good years to complete my studies in Sierra Leone and come back. What would you like to share with uh, young boys or girls who may also want to follow your footsteps to answer to the call to the priesthood or to the religious life? Anyway, my message to the young people um, outside there to come to the religious life or the priesthood that um, in life it is very difficult to make choice because choice has to do with a human being. And at the same time, choice is personal and is individual. Um, looking at the priesthood or the religious life is not a child's play because it has to do with dying to yourself, denying yourself, yourself, so many things. And it is very difficult in our epoch, in our era today, as a young man, to deny yourself so many things, because we live in a world that people are always eager to make it up in life. People are always eager to have everything around them to have everything at their own control. So it's very difficult to make a choice. And I want to tell them that, let them not be afraid, because as a Christian or as a Catholics in this Catholic Diocese of the Gambia, we have to make a choice or we have to fall in love with this vocation. Otherwise, we cannot make it because the number is very small. And the Diocese of Banjul is going through a very serious crisis of shortage of priests and religious. So the young people should come and make a try. 
so that Jesus Christ can be made known to the four corners of this country. Because people are thirsty, people are hungry for the word, so we need to give them 